Dynamic milling strategies are getting more and more popular in the CNC market, especially if you have a machine that can perform this dynamic movements. They look fancy, the machine is in continuous moving, but when is it really useful to have one of these strategies? So we're gonna compare a conventional strategy versus a dynamic strategy in this particular part. And we're looking at a special end mill, which is one of my favorite end mills. My name is Mark, welcome to Daytron Tech Talk. So in different cam systems, they, the dynamic milling strategies are called in different ways. It might be adaptive or dynamic motion or eye machining. There are like various names for it. The clear difference between conventional strategy and the dynamic is in conventional, the machine would try to just follow along the contour with the tool path. So it just kind of projects an offset um, of the entire tool pass and then just making a pocket or a contour bigger and bigger. Whereas in dynamic, it tries to go down to its final depth, use the entire flute length and keep the machine going all around. If we compare this in this, in this part here, I have three operations in total. And if we look at this, the first one comes from the outside. So the tool would go down on its full depth here and going around, going around, making several cuts from the outside to the inside until it has reached its final dimensions. Whereas in a pocket, it would start with a spiral movement. So it, it, it's not plunging in like a drilling movement. It's like trying to, to get a, a smooth run also for bringing, bringing the tool into its final depth and then making the pocket bigger and bigger. Whereas in conventional, I have a ramp movement, so I'm just clicking my outside contour. It just follows along and going deeper and deeper. And in pockets, also we have kind of a ramp movement of like one millimeter, step down, then making the full pocket. So we see on our top view here, this is the contour of the, of the pocket. It's just offset it several times. So it starts from the middle going bigger and bigger. And once again, back to the dynamic one where we have like a big, big spiral and a smaller step over. And that is the, the, the other difference between conventional and dynamic in the way we use it here. In conventional, we going a, a millimeter down. So we're going with the full diameter of the tool through the material. Whereas in the dynamic strategies, we're like getting this, this first spiral and then making a very small step over, but at the full depth. So instead of full diameter, we're using the full length of the flute. So that's, that's the, the major difference. Speaking about the tool that we use, we're gonna use a um, eight millimeter single flute with a flute length of 17 millimeters. Super stiff tool, one of my favorite tools to use. Um, so let's just compare the, the motions between those um, and afterwards we check out the different times if it's really uh, more time efficient to use the dynamic strategy. So here we come with the dynamic strategy. The tool is getting closer and closer to its final contour. It considers the stock size of it and then just approaches from the outside to the inside. Speaking about speeds and feeds, with this particular tool, we go in, like I said, full depth and a step over of 7.5% of the diameter, which is kind of a rule of thumb. So I always try to keep that step over for dynamic processes between five and 10% of the tool diameters. And if we're getting closer to like more of the outside of this pocket, we can see why the dynamic strategies are not always like the best one because we're going into like a more like narrow area and you can see the machine has to accelerate and break down many, many times. And that puts like over the time, this puts a lot of stress on the machine and all the mechanics. We have a, a better tool wear because we're using the entire flute length, but also in this particular one, we can see it, there's a lot of movements. The machine can perform this, but like over the time, it will probably wear out the mechanics. So now comparing this to the previous operation is we do in the side cuts just like two steps 
in X and Y and one millimeter cuts in the depth in, in Z. And this is the big difference. We're now only using that, the, that one millimeter on the tip of the flute. Especially you can see this now in, the, in that big pocket. We're going full diameter, but only one millimeter of the flute length, which means we're only wearing this um, millimeter out. So in fact, our tool will at some point be worn out just at the top, whereas the rest is still fine. Now let's compare the different results of both strategies. Speaking about the time, we have three different operations. We have the outside contour, which is a kind of a square contour or rectangle contour. We have these six pockets that go around and we have the inner pocket. Both outside contours are faster in dynamic motion. Because we're using the full flute length, there is not a big pocket and we're kind of deeper. And the inside pocket is actually faster in the conventional strategy because it's only 12 millimeters deep and we have these kind of narrow area areas around here. So the, the dynamic motion needs a lot of movements going back and forth, whereas the, the continuous contour movement is a lot faster. And it, it actually takes only two minutes in conventional, whereas two minutes and 20 seconds in dynamic motion. Speaking about the quality, that's the one or the, like the, the ground pattern, the floor pattern that we have um, on the, for dynamic. It's like smoother, it looks kind of nicer. You see all these like radial cuts, the spiral cuts. On conventional, you can clearly see where the axis always stop on a corner to go around. So you have like more of the, of the marks of the actual cutter on the ground. So summing this up, there is no easy answer to the question dynamic strategy or a conventional strategy. It really depends on the geometry you want to cut. If it's an open pocket, is there a lot of material removed? And especially how deep is the pocket or the feature you want to mill? So for more like shallower areas, flat areas, you would clearly go for a conventional cut because it's a lot faster. You have less step downs. Whereas on deeper pockets, you can use the, uh, yeah, the dynamic motion, the, the uh, dynamic and adaptive strategies. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you have questions concerning this or any other applications, just put them in the comments. We try to answer them. Um, and yeah, once again, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye.